we've done a lot of talking about operant and classical conditioning. Where I'm going to leave the conditioning bit off is with one final complex conditioning example. So this example is a real example, and it combines classical and operant conditioning. And one of the reasons why I'm explaining this is that in everyday life, we're constantly experiencing a mix of classical and operant conditioning in very complex ways. It would be very hard for us to pick apart our everyday lives. So this was a control study done in a research lab, but still really shows how complicated these paradigms can be. So it starts off with some rats on a conveyor belt. There's no consequences. There's no conditioning happening. They can turn the conveyor belt on and the rats can get pushed leftward. They can turn the conveyor belt off and the rats can run around and they can eat and they can look for mates and sniff things and they're fine. They're not too stressed out, but they're not having the time of their life either. Then what they can do is they can add uh, a component of instinctive drift here. We know that rats like dark places. So the researchers added a dark end to one of the conveyor belts. It had like a little roof, it had a little covering, and they could add a bit of a box there. So that dark component was a preferred location and the rats tended to drift there. But it wasn't linked to any consequence, it wasn't paired to anything, and we would call this a neutral stimuli or neutral stimuli one. And not because it's truly neutral, it does elicit a bit of a positive effect, but at this point in the study, it's unassociated with anything else. They're not associating with anything. There's no acquisition happening at this point in time. So when the conveyor belt is on or off, whatever, it, it, it's fine. And when the conveyor belt is on, it actually pushes the rats into the dark compartment and they like it. That's, that's okay. But the next thing the researchers did was they hooked up a panel in the dark compartment that if the rats were in the dark compartment, they would receive a mild electric shock. Well, that's not good. They don't like being electric shocked. Uh, so the electric shock is gonna be the unconditioned stimulus and receiving the shock is the unconditioned response. And so now by pairing the shark with the dark compartment, that's classical conditioning. And they're going to receive uh, a shock there. They're going to map that on and the dark compartment will no longer be neutral. It'll now be a conditioned stimulus. The rats are not going to like that. The rats are now going to want to avoid the dark compartment. In addition to making the dark compartment uh, condition stimulus one, neutral stimulus two is the moving conveyor belt. When they turn on the conveyor belt, the conveyor belt is now pushing the rats towards the dark compartment. Because of early avoidance, and rats are very smart, very trainable, they now change and match that conveyor belt with the dark compartment, and the dark compartment is matched with the, with the electric shock. So through that early avoidance, they're now going to want to run when the conveyor belt turns on. That is, the conveyor belt is now turned into condition stimulus two, and that condition stimulus two will elicit conditioned response two, which is the rats to run. So now they're, when the conveyor belt turns on, they're going to scurry to the other end and it's not going so fast. They're not going to get too overwhelmed or too overtired, but they have to constantly move to stay out of the dark compartment to avoid that shock. If they pause for too long, they'll run into the dark compartment and they'll receive an electric shock, which is a punishment at this point. So now we're starting to cross between classical conditioning and operant conditioning. Now we can see that if they're running, that's negative reinforcement. And if they sit still, they're going to receive a positive punishment and get that electric shock. Then we can make it even more complicated. We can make a photo beam shoot across the width of the conveyor belt at the opposite end. And if something blocks the photo beam, it can turn the conveyor belt off for three minutes. Rats are very trainable. They'll learn about this very quickly. And the first, first time might be a fluke, might have to happen uh, by mistake. But once they figure it out, they'll learn that crossing the photo beam, even with their nose or an ear or a tail, will make the conveyor belt stop for three minutes. So this becomes condition stimulus three. They start to associate the, the photo beam with the conveyor belt changing. And by crossing the photo beam, they are negatively reinforced and the conveyor belt stops moving. So then they don't get in the dark box and then they don't get the electric shock. And so basically they will learn this and we can use a fixed ratio reinforcement schedule. It might not be that crossing the photo beam once will turn off the conveyor belt. We can actually make them start off with a, uh, with a ratio of one to 10, that they have to cross the photo beam 10 times before it'll turn off. In real world studies where this has been the case, a group of rats have managed to make it so no one gets an electric shock and the conveyor belt barely runs for the entire hour that they are in the conveyor belt. 
just by having it turn off for three minutes at a time, or even if they adjust it so the photo beam turns off for only one minute and they have a fixed ratio where they have to cross the photo beam 15 times, the RAS will learn that as soon as the conveyor belt starts running, they cross the photo beam as many times as they can and it'll turn off and then they can relax and enjoy their environment and they just avoid the dark box. So this is just one study, but in this one study, it shows how you can layer on these different classical and operant conditioning paradigms in a very complicated way.